we went through these rules that are up here on the screen right now yesterday and you know it's it's nice that you guys have things memorized but I really hope you understand it kind of in your gut you can picture electrons as these little particles you can picture them moving and you can even understand that there are rules that everything has to follow you know we have rules you can't wake up one day and say hmm today I think I will ignore the rule I will break the rule of gravity the law of gravity I'm just gonna hover around today I'm not gonna pay any attention to that rule and electrons are governed must follow rules just like you and I these are the three main ones and if you understand those you don't really have to have them memorized rule number one says this but you just can predict what they're gonna do uh, it is very helpful in anticipating where they're gonna flow how much are gonna flow one way versus another you can make predictions about what the voltage will be um, whether the ball will light bright or dim all the things we did yesterday today's lab is really no different than yesterday's even though most of you didn't even do yesterday's lab you just did it on paper you'll have an opportunity to go try out your predictions you're gonna make some predictions about what kind of circuit we have and the circuits will be more complicated than what they were yesterday but the concepts the same I'm not covering anything new today it's exact same concept now I ask you to take out your paper not because we're grading it right yet I want you to have it out so you can make corrections as I talk about and we review this stuff in case you made a mistake and the very first thing you'd look for is did you answer in complete sentences the first one and the last four don't have to be the others should be a complete thought the second thing you might look for is when I ask a question like uh, that the bulb is removed that means we have what kind of circuit open circuit okay and when I ask you uh, why is this the case why is it brighter why is it dimmer why did it go out why did it stay on I'm not looking for an answer like it is in parallel it is in series because those don't really give me information they just list a fact but they don't explain why what is it about a series circuit what is it about a parallel circuit that make them unique that affects the flow of electrons okay electricity is the circuit is if I break that path I have what kind of circuit open circuit okay if it's complete I have a closed circuit if I provide an easier path that the electrons want to go through but not what I want out of the circuit I have a short circuit in a short circuit, I might create a couple of undesired things. What might they be? Heat and sparks. Sparks could lead to fire. Now, we don't always get sparks when we have a short circuit. When you made a short circuit out of your battery, you just got heat. We didn't have enough flow, enough current. But there are times where we can have sparks. Okay, you get a short circuit in one of these outlets, you're going to talk about making a fire, a, a real a fire hazard. Nathan? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Right, right. And that's not the way we want to turn the lights out is by sticking a wire in the outlet like that. That's creating a, a path that the electrons want to take because they will take the path of least resistance. Again, if you think about these rules every time, uh, you'll be able to predict what the electrons will do. And I'm going to ask you some questions today, some thinking questions as a quick review here to see if you truly do understand this concept but it does come back to these three rules okay they only travel forward they're trying to get to the opposite side and they will take the path of least resistance as we look at this first circuit okay what kind of circuit is this what's the relationship between these two light bulbs series well here's your clue right here it says series right at the top <laughs> okay it is a series circuit and I gave you a couple tests a couple ways to identify a series circuit one method was trace both wires back whenever anything is hooked up to electricity it has to have two connections there has to be a way of getting electrons into this to work here 
get the electrons into the light bulb and also a way to carry them away back to the other side of the battery. That's the whole goal of those electrons. Now the little red arrows represent the electrons. I don't really like this simulation that much because in reality you know they don't just go through this black wire here. They're going to come up and go through the light bulb filament and then back out. Up through the other light bulb filament and then back out. But the arrows do show you a flow. And, you know, it's funny because I talk about electrons and I say electrons want to do this and want to do that. And one year I had a student say, uh, Mr. Myers, are electrons little people? No, they're not little people, okay? They're not little living things. They are just particles. And I'm just trying to get you to think of them like living things because it helps in visualizing. They can't say, you know, today I feel tired. I'm not going to move. Or I'm not going to go forward, I'm going to go backwards. They have to follow those three rules every time. And they'll always do the same predictable things. We know based on those three rules. Rule number one, they want to go forward only. Rule number two, they want to get to the opposite side. Rule number three, they take the path of least resistance. In this case, it is the wire. They're going to go through the wire versus going from here over to here, jumping through the air. The air has too much resistance. So this is a series circuit. And just to prove to me that you understand, the other test I gave for telling if it's a series circuit is, what would happen if we take out one bulb? If I were to remove, let's say, this bulb, I would leave a gap in the wire there. Would this bulb stay lit? No. The second bulb would not stay lit because it is a, what kind of circuit? open circuit. When we have an open circuit, we have no flow. And again, the other test for a series circuit is those two wires. Do they have to go through another device that uses electricity to get back to the battery? In this case, they do. You know that this wire goes through the light bulb, comes back out, and continues on up here. Okay. So that means they're going to share the voltage. If I have one and a half volts here, how much is this one going to have? Oh my goodness, I made you do math in your head. If I have one and a half volts here, how many volts is this going to have? 0.75, three quarters. What's this going to have? 0.75. They have to share it. Okay? And if I take out one, the other one's going to go out. Now, show me again that you understand a series circuit. If I were to move this light bulb here, would it be brighter, dimmer, or not affected? Not affected. not affected. If I were to move this light bulb on the other side of the switch and put it right here, would it be brighter, dimmer, or not affected? Not affected. Okay. If I were to switch this switch off in the open position, would this light be on? No. Would this light be on? No. If I were to put the switch right here and put it in the off position, the open position, would this light be on? No. Would this light be on? No. no. So in a series circuit, you make a change. If I change the battery here, would that affect these? Yes. Everything's affected because they're all a part of that loop, that chain. Okay. Now when we look at a parallel circuit here, the light bulbs barely even show up because they're much brighter. Why are they brighter, Matt? Why are they brighter here? Nope, it's not a shorter path. Yes, or put another way, they don't have to go through another device to get back to the battery. This light bulb has two wires. One's going to go this way and the other one's going to connect here. Now you may be saying, oh, but wait, they have to go through a switch. Does a switch use electricity up? No. It just provides a path or doesn't provide a path. It doesn't use up electricity any more than that valve on my water faucet uses water. Right now it's switched off. The water faucet valve is not using up water. This is not using up water. It's either going to allow it to flow through, allow the electrons to flow through or not. So you can see that in a parallel circuit, I've got 
the red and I've got the blue. I've got one path for this light bulb, one wire here, the other one here, and I've got a separate path for the top light bulb. So they don't share. They get the full voltage. If I have one and a half volts here, what do I have here? One and a half. What do I have here? One and a half. And they're going to be brighter. Nathan? If the wire was a thousand miles long, it would have so much resistance that bulb wouldn't even be lit. The longer the wire is, if you run power lines, long, long distances, remember what I said we do for that? We're carrying alternating current, so the flow is going to be going back and forth, so that's a little different. But in order to carry electricity long distances, what do we do to the voltage? What do we call that when we increase the voltage with a transformer? What's that transformer called? Step up transformer. And we actually say we step up the voltage. So the voltage that comes out of the power plant is much, much higher than you need here in your house or in, at school. We bring it much, much higher. So the power lines you see that are really, really tall on the super tall power poles, those are going to have voltages that are much higher than you have in your house. As you get closer to the source where it needs to go to the house, you bring the voltage down. If I try to hook up a one and a half volt battery to a light bulb and I had a thousand miles of wire in between, even though the wire is a good conductor, being that long, it's going to create a lot of resistance to flow and we wouldn't even see the light bulb light. Yes? Wouldn't it do what? Well, first of all, there's not a north and south pole. No, because again, in order for electricity to jump an inch, you need, I don't remember if it's 10 or 50, but you need like either 10 or 50,000 volts. Remember when we get a spark from your finger to, you know, the Van de Graaff generator or the metal plate on the light switch or whatever? For it to jump one inch requires thousands of volts. This only puts out one and a half. So no, it wouldn't just jump over this way. I see what you're saying, but no, the air is still too much resistance. So if there's too much resistance for it to make it through there, it doesn't go anywhere. It just stays where it's at, okay? It's like having an open circuit. All right, so show me that you truly understand now. If I were to switch off this switch, would bulb A stay on? No. Would bulb B stay on? No. no. They would both go off. If I were to put this switch and install it right here, okay, and switch it off, put it in the open position, would bulb A stay on? No. Would bulb B stay on? Yes. yes. That shows me that you are, in your mind, tracing that path back. And that's what I need to know you can do. So, to quickly review, and then we'll grade this and get to today's lab, A is what kind of relationship here? And B is parallel. If I were to remove L2 from A, what would happen to L1? It would go off, out. Why? We have what kind of circuit? Open circuit. Uh, we have an incomplete circuit. We don't have a path. Bianca, what's the relationship here? Parallel. Parallel. If I were to remove L2, what would happen to L1? Thank you, Bianca. Yes, it would stay on. Why? Why would this still stay on if I took this out? It has its own path back. It doesn't have to go through the other ball. If I have 10 volts here, well, how many volts do I have here, Matt? Let's try that again. If I have 10 volts here, how many volts do I have at L1? I don't know, it's not an answer. Give me a number. Ten. No. Andrew? Five volts. Five volts. What do I have here, Andrew? Five. Five. Okay, Aurora, if I have 10 volts here, how many volts do I have here? Ten. TJ, how many volts do I have here? Ten. Okay. They don't have to share. They have their own supply back. Now, let me go to, oh, let's see, Bobby. If I were to move this up here, this light, L2, up here, what would be the, the relationship between L1 and L2? Parallel. Parallel. What if I were to move it down here? 
What, what if I were to take off this whole section and put this bulb over here instead? Excellent. Okay, so you can see it's not just that these lines run parallel, it's do they have their own path back? You have to trace it back. If I were to remove uh, Mia, if I were to remove L1, what would happen to L2? If I were to take L1 out of this circuit and there was nothing in between these two points, what would happen to L2? Why? Yes, you do. Why would it stay lit? What does this need to stay lit? How many wires? No, I don't know. It's not an answer. Give me a number. How many wires? Look at it right there. How many wires does it need? Okay, it doesn't help if you just tell her the answer. That's, that kind of defeats the point of this, guys. How many wires, ma'am? Two. two. Can you trace two wires back to the battery? Yes. Did they have to go through this one? No. no. Then it is parallel. You're right. All right, look down at C now. What is the relationship between L1 and L3? Sedona. Parallel. Parallel. We just ignore L2, pretend it doesn't exist when we're looking at that. What is the relationship between L2 and L3? Jeff. Series. Series. If we treat L2 and L3 as a group, what is the relationship between L1 and L2, L3 as a group? Parallel. parallel. Excellent. So if this and these two are in parallel, that would make it just like which circuit? A or B? B would make it just like this. So if I had 10 volts here, Matt, what would I have here? Five. Bianca? 10. And Bianca, how many volts would the pair have? 10. 10. Excellent. Because this had 10 and this had 10. So if the pair has 10 and those two are in what relationship? Series. Then L2 has? And L3 has? Okay. What would happen if I were to take a wire and connect it from here to there? What would happen to L2? It would go out. Why? Path of least resistance. It's a short circuit. I heard some of you say that. What would happen to L1? It would get brighter. It would stay lit, but it would get brighter because it no longer has to share the voltage. Now, before you answer, think carefully. Remember my rules about electrons and series and parallel circuits. If I do the same thing here with L2 here, think about it now. How is that going to affect L2? Nathan? It's going to go out for the same reason that one went out, right? You have a choice of the electrons. You're not going to go through this. You're going to go through the easy wire. What about L1? Brianna? Nothing's going to happen to it. What do you mean nothing's going to happen to it? It's just going to stay the same. As it was? Yeah. Okay. Andrew? I don't think it'll um, light up. I think it'll just take the easier path. Okay, now point at Brianna like this and go in your face. <laughs> She's almost always right, so that's why, you know, you got to rub it in when you're right. You're absolutely right, and a lot of people miss that. You're thinking, oh, well, I didn't touch this. Remember, that one never is affected because it's got its own thing going on. Do you see how putting a wire across here is the same as doing this? You do see that, right? Okay. And if I am the electrons, and I'm traveling through the wire, I'm following the rules that I brought up. Here are the electrons here, right? They only go forward. Their goal is to get over here to the other side of the battery, and they're going to take the path of least resistance. Here you are. You reach this fork in the road. You can go right and go through L1, the tiny little bulb filament, to get to the other side. Or if you continue on, you can go through this easy wire all the way to the other side. I think you know what's going to happen. How many are going to go this way? None. Why would they go through a bulb when they can go through a simple wire back? Okay, so that does uh, create a short circuit and both bulbs go out. It would be the same as taking a wire and doing this. 
right here is going to accomplish the same thing. Yeah, that's one way to turn out the lights. Does that mean we're not using electricity? Do we have a circuit? Yes, we do. Right here, a complete loop for it to continue to flow through. We bypassed it. There's no reason for it to go through these things when it can go through the wire. And we're going to create both bulbs.